So this video is on the solutions for the uh, homework on equivalent trigonometric expressions. Uh, you can download this worksheet uh, from the Google Drive if you don't have it already. Okay, so for question one, I'm trying to find that um, what is sine of pi over 3 given that cos of pi over 6 equals root 3 over 2? So this question is pretty easy because pi over 3 is in the first quadrant. So find the complementary angle to pi over 3 and that allows you to go from sine to cosine and bam, root 3 over 2. Uh, cotan of 5 pi over 6, what is that equal to given that tan of pi over 3 equals root 3? So there are two ways to approach this question. You can take 5 pi over 6, push it to the first quadrant, because right now it's in the second quadrant, push it to the first, and then take the complementary angle. And that will allow you to go from cotan to tan. But the way I did it was I chose to find the angle uh, between the terminal arm and the y-axis. If the angle of 5 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant, I'm trying to find what's the angle between the y-axis and the terminal arm. If you do the math, uh, you take pi over 6 and subtract by pi over 2, you get pi over 3, which is perfect. So this is saying pi over 2 plus pi over 3, which means that the angle between the terminal arm and the y-axis is pi over 3. Thus, I can just switch it quite simply from cotan to tan because the reference angle is complementary to pi over 3, which means it goes from cotan to tan of pi over 3. And I put a negative because that angle is in the second quadrant where cotan is negative. So then I'm done the question because I know what tan of pi over 3 is. So for 3a, I am given sine of 2 pi over 7. So what is cos of 3 pi over 14? So 3 pi over 14 is in the first quadrant. So uh, quite simply find the complementary angle and you're done. Okay, so approximately 0 0.7818. Uh, cos of 11 pi over 14, same question essentially. You're given cosine of 2 pi over 7. So what is cosine of 11 pi over 14? This one is in the second quadrant. Once again, you can do it two different ways, but I chose to find the angle between the terminal arm and the y-axis because I realized I have to go from cosine to sine because I'm told what sine of 2 pi over 7 is. I have to use that piece of knowledge, which means I'm going to go from cosine to sine. I, I don't want to stay with cosine. So if that's the case, uh, that means the angle complement the reference angle is complementary to pi over 7. So I can just go from cosine to sine, add negative because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. 11 pi over 14 is in second quadrant, approximately 0 0.7818. Okay, let's look at number four here. I'm asked, uh, or I'm asked, what is tan of 5 pi over 18? and I'm told what cotan of 2 pi over 9 is. So if you do that, uh, 5 pi over 18 is easy because it's in the first quadrant. Complementary angle, and I'm done. 13 pi over 18, this is in the second quadrant. So once again, find the angle between the terminal arm and the y-axis, and luckily it's 2 pi over 9. So that means I can switch it to cotan of 2 pi over 9. Uh, negative because tan is negative in the second quadrant. Okay, so questions one, two, three, and four are is pretty repetitive so far because we're working with quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant one, quadrant two. All right, cotan of 1.45. Ooh, 1.45, where is that? 1.45 radians, that is located in the first quadrant. How do I know it's in the first quadrant? Well, zero radians, is obviously zero radians. But what is pi over two radians approximately? Pi over two is approximately 1.57 radians. So 1.45 is between zero and 1.57. Let's write that down. So this is zero, and then pi over two is approximately 1.57. So 1.45 is somewhere in the first quadrant. Okay, and pi is obviously 3.14. And if you want, you can punch in your calculator, 3 pi over 2, and you can find out what that is approximately in radians. 
That's 4.71 approximately. So if I said the angle is six radians, that means we're in the fourth quadrant because it's between 4.71 and two pi is 6.28 approximately. Okay, so, okay. I am given tan of 0.12 and they asked me what's cotan of 1.45. Find the angle complementary to, oh sorry, in this question they're asking me to solve for uh, an angle in quadrant one that's tan. So tan of an angle in quadrant one is equal to cotan of 1.45. So just take the complementary angle and then we're done. So A is approximately 0 0.12. They asked me to round it to two decimal places. Okay, so for number six, let's see. They say cos x equals sine of 0 0.79, but this time x is in the second quadrant. No problem, okay. So I use identity that pushes the first quadrant to the second quadrant, and uh, that also allows me to switch to the complementary trig function. So since you wanna switch to the complementary trig function and you want the angle to be in second quadrant, you want pi over two plus 0 0.79. You want the angle uh, between the terminal arm and the y-axis to be 0 0.79. And your angle is approximately 2.36. Number seven, cos of four pi over nine. Well, number seven is a funny question. They said that the cosine key on the calculator is not working. So to figure out cosine four pi over nine, we're gonna have to switch cosine to an equivalent trig expression of sine. Uh, so four pi over nine is in the first quadrant. So find the complementary angle and you're done. Okay, number eight. Uh, number eight is pretty straightforward because uh, it's cosine and they're not changing it to the complementary trig function. It's cosine sticking with cosine. So cosine of 13 pi over 14, what is that equal to given the knowledge of cos of pi over 14? So you don't need to switch it to sine, just find the reference angle. And guess what? The reference angle of 13 pi over 14 is pi over 14. Of course it is, because that's what they told us. Right? If I didn't know what pi, cos of pi over 14 is, I cannot do this question. Uh, be careful, negative in the second quadrant, so it's negative 0 0.9749. Uh, 8b is same thing, find the reference angle, but 15 pi over 14 is in the third quadrant. So you still get negative 0 0.9749. Okay, 9a. So 9a, 23 pi over 18, that's in the third quadrant. Okay, what is cotan of 23 pi over 18 uh, given tan of 2 pi over 9? So I want to push it to the first quadrant and switch it from cotan to tan. So I find the angle once again between the terminal arm and the y-axis. So I did three pi over two minus 23 pi over 18, which is two pi over nine. So that means three pi over two minus two pi over nine is 23 pi over 18. That's beautiful. That means the angle between the terminal arm and the y-axis is two pi over nine, which allows me to switch it straight to tan of two pi over nine. And it's not negative because cotan is positive in the third quadrant. Okay, so for part B, I showed two different ways of doing the question. I have cotan of 31 pi over 18. This, the first way I showed it was using uh, the angle between the terminal arm and the y-axis. Now 31 pi over 18 is in the fourth quadrant. So I did three pi over two, plus two pi over nine, which enables me to push it to the first quadrant and switch it to the complementary trig function. Add an sign because 31 pi over 18 is in the fourth quadrant where cotan is negative. The other way, so I haven't done this way, but I just wanna show the students who like this way better. So the longer way of doing it is pushing it to the first quadrant, but be careful, add the negative sign because cotan is negative in the, uh, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, and then switch it to the complementary trig function by taking a complementary angle, and there you go. Okay, so I, some students really like this. They want to break it down to mini steps. So go right ahead, doesn't matter. Okay, so
So last question, secant of 3a minus pi over 4 is equal to minus cosecant of 4a minus pi over 4. So I have to solve for a. I realize that I really don't like this negative. This negative sign here, I really don't like because even if I have both of them to be secant or both of them to be cosecant, this negative will be uh, a problem for me because I can't equate the angles. So I really want to get rid of that negative sign. And luckily, there's a very easy way to do it because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. If cosecant is reciprocal of sine and sine is an odd function, guess what? Cosecant must also be an odd function. So I can just basically multiply the angles by negative the angles by negative one and I'm done. Okay, so once you get over that hump, then the left side is actually not that bad because I can go from secant to cosecant by taking the complementary angle of 3a minus pi over 4. So that's what I did. And then I have cosecant of this equals cosecant of this. Guess what? These two angles, I can set them equal to each other because the trig expressions are identical. So set them equal to each other, solve for a, basic algebra. a is negative pi over 2. So hopefully that wasn't too bad, uh, but you can post some questions um, under the video.